very much. Our next speaker is Mr. Brer. Thank you. I was extremely impressed and I wish to applaud Kim Chi Ha's speech today, uh, particularly his use of the symbol of water, which I'll come back to in a minute. Yes, let's look at the I Ching gram for water and fire on water. That's the symbol for revolution because two opposites self-extinguish. I don't believe that we should have one supreme view or another of East versus West because both are merging very fast with globalization and internet and the values can be self-generating and harmonious. I appreciate the statements that were made about my country, America. Yes, uh, we have a very good education system, but I must say some of the most robust creativity occurring in the country today is because of a relatively open immigration system which allows talent from Asia, from Latin America, and from elsewhere in the world to come into that country. I was recently in New York. You're with a Sikh taxi driver. You're eating halal food on Wall Street at a stand. This is the creativity energy of other places, diversity. We as people are defined by our diversity. If we take that away, well, we're pretty homogenous and not terribly interesting as people. In that is creativity. In this, I'm also calling for a revolution, but a peaceful revolution. One that's built on common sense, not the suppression of one ideology, fundamentalism, whether it's religious, economic, or political in any form does not support creativity and harmony in this world. I call for common sense approaches. You know, we need this with economics. How can you have theorists sitting in an icebox somewhere else in the world, going across the world, telling other people how to run their economies? I think it's a joke when IMF advisors show up in a developing country and talk about village economics when they themselves have never spent a night in a village. We also need to have a kind of compassionate economics. We need to bring in sort of values of Asia. I mean, the rich values of this part of the world, whether it's Hindu, Buddhist, Islam, uh, we have either zakat or almsgiving, care for others. In a world with increasingly finite and diminishing resources, we have to change our values of consumption. I don't believe that our stimulus packages that are increasing consumption are going to solve our economic problems because actually overconsumption is the cause of our problems. We need to find new ways, new ways to balance. From these philosophies, these ideas, we have many indigenous solutions. For instance, microfinance pioneered by Mohammed Yunus in Bangladesh. This is a very indigenous concept. It comes from many of the roots of Bengali society village society, but now microfinance is being used to solve the problems of America in New York and Detroit. It's being introduced as a way to solve our own urban problems. There's no supremacy in one ideology or one economic system. Diversity is our answer. You know we have many cars in our parking lots in America and some people live in houses the size of palaces, but they're also emotionally dysfunctional and spiritually void. So we can talk about branding. Well, the biggest brand in the world today is yoga. People are practicing it to address this very issue all over America because we are synthesizing the values of Asia because after eight years of neoconservatism, unnecessary wars which have bankrupted our financial system and ruined our credibility throughout the world, we need a new economic paradigm. It's not Washington consensus, it's also not Beijing consensus. I call it Himalayan consensus because it's all embracing and expansive of Asia, East Asia, South East Asia, and South Asia. We need to bring ourselves to, to one point, and that is water. I come back to what Kim Chi Ha said about water. The glaciers of the Himalayas are melting at such a fast rate because of CO2 emissions that we are nearing the tipping point. I live in Lhasa. The snows now do not form on the Himalayan plateau until January. Normally it's covered with snow from October until March. If we tip or we go over that tip point, which is nearing very quickly, the rivers of the Yellow, the Yangtze of China, 
the Salawin, Irrawaddy, Mekong of Southeast Asia, the Brahmaputra, Indus, and Ganges of South Asia will have no water and two-thirds of humanity will have no water to drink. This is a potential crisis of Darfur expanding two continents and we're heading right into it. This is the point of communication we must bring together all the countries of Asia. I initially call for a trilateral between America, China, America, and India, the three largest CO2 emitters, to talk about innovation of technology and science and business, which requires government support to turn around this crisis. I'll leave you with one thought. We can give our children money but can we give them water to drink? Thank you. More comments, please? More questions? Yeah, over there. I think it is distorted to always accuse the Asian values of being something less than universal. In my opinion, in Asian countries, whether in China or in Singapore where I come from, or in Korea, where we are now, it is actually important to bear in mind that many of the things that we hold dear, which we don't call it values, have already been accepted for centuries. For example, many of us in Asia respect family. Many of us in Asia respect meritocracy, as Professor Roland had mentioned. And many of us in Asia respect education, the acquisition of knowledge. And this is why many of us in universities, in wherever we are working, are contributing to innovative solutions to our modern world. So if you look at such things that we have in our respective Asian societies, there is a lot of values, if you like, but I would say universal ways I think the Asian community is already upon us. It was created or driven by economics, but it will be sustained by values. Just reflecting on response to predicament, look at Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans and the federal government's response. Look at the tsunami that hit Southeast Asia a few years ago and the response of Asian countries to helping out other Asian countries. A year ago, the Sichuan earthquake was disastrous, but it was not only Chinese, but Asians throughout Asia who responded to their fellow Asians. We went into debate about East and West, but we did not go into debate about humanity. One thought that came from Larry about the importance of water. Water is a requirement for all living beings, which is humans, animals, and plants. In my presentation, I have brought you something which is known as Ayuboho One, which is a Sanskrit word which gives you my prayer to have good health and long life. I'll tell a very simple story, an incident so small, but it changed my life. When I started working in Tibet, one morning I woke up and I went to the street and bought some naan, like Tibetan bread and it cost ba mao, 80, 80 cents. And there were three little beggar children who grabbed me. Now, coming from white America, which is supposed to be neoliberal, whatever, were said, oh, no free lunch. Everybody works for themselves. Never give money to beggars, because they'll always want more. These are the things we're taught as kids. The Tibetan lady selling me the naan took the 80 cents, put 50 cents in her pocket, for the sale and took the other 30 cents and pulled the children aside and said, please don't bother the foreigner, it will give him a bad impression. Here, 10 cents for each of you, go off. I learned a lot from Tibetan people living in the Himalayas and I'll share my philosophy today. Take only what you need, but give back as much as you can. That is a universal Asian value. Thank you very much.